Steven Spielberg is the hottest movie director in America. At 21, he was directing Joan Crawford. At 27, he directed Jaws. He has since made Close Encounters and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now he has two mammoth movies released almost simultaneously, Poltergeist, a suburban ghost story, and E.T., a breathtaking film that opens Friday and is sure to be an immense hit. Today we begin an exclusive three-part conversation with Steven Spielberg. I began by asking him about his very first professional assignment. The assignment was the pilot for Night Gallery. It was a trilogy, and I was going to direct the second middle segment with Joan Crawford being the star. And in it, Rod Sterling wrote the piece, and in it she was supposed to play a blind lady in New York City the irony was she's blind and she gets her sight back during the New York blackout and just when she can see for 12 hours, it's the blackout. As the sun rises, she has four minutes of sight and she goes blind again, jumps out the window. Okay, um, the power of television, I don't know. And I remember going over to Joan's house and she just assumed that Universal had hired a, a substantial professional veteran director to direct her, someone of her stature. She, they, she assumed they were going to match uh, someone like... like uh, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, George Cukor, for instance. I, I think she expected someone like Cukor to take over the reins and director. And I remember not, she had no idea that I was 21 years old at the time. Nobody had told her that I was 21. Big mistake. And I walked into this room, and there's Joan with bandages around her eyes, flailing her arms and stumbling through the room, knocking things over, saying, Stephen, is that you? Saying, you're going to love this. I've learned how to, I, I've learned how to, get around my apartment without seeing. I'm practicing. I'm getting into character for Miss Menlo. And lamps were falling over. The telephone came off the hook and hit the ground with that terrible ring. And she was kicking cords and knocking over trash buckets. And it was, it was, it was brutally funny. I, I mean, I was just, I didn't know what to do, laugh or, or just turn around and go back to film school. And she finally walked over to me and she undid her, her wrappings. And she looked at me and she almost screamed. And she said, my God, we can't go out for dinner. People will think you're my son. And the next day, I understand, she called the tower at Universal. And she said in a very nice way, she said, I think he's going to be great, but don't you have anybody in their 70s or 80s? And they had nobody working on the lot in the 70s or 80s, and she had to accept me. And I remember, more than anything else, the first day of shooting, the crew had a very uh, uh, ant antagonistic reaction to my involvement as the director of the show. Because in those days, we're talking about 1969, the crews, the average age was 50, 55, and 60, and these, these crew members who work with all the great directors, they work with Capper and Sturgis, they work with Hawks and Ford, they work with C.B. DeMille. And I remember uh, Joan giving a speech and standing up and saying, I have great respect for this director. I've worked with him before, a small white lie, and um, I want you to treat him as well as you would treat me. We're all in it, we're all professionals. And I'll never forget that speech he gave to the whole crew. And from that moment on, not only did the crew treat me better, but Joan treated me like I've been directing for 50 years. She, I guess, just imagined I was George Cukor. What is the insurmountable obstacle? Well, it's simply, Miss Menlo, you need a donor. Someone would be willing to part with his sight for the rest of his life to give you roughly 12 hours of it. I don't believe there's such a person around. Nonsense, Doctor. Everyone has a price. <laughs> Miss Menlo, the United Hour can be any moment now, as I told you, any time after five o'clock. But may I make a few suggestions? Remove the bandages very gradually. made a lot of mistakes in that show and eventually had the show in post-production uh, uh, um, uh, re-edited by you know the, the producer of the show which I guess was right because I was doing shots through chandelier bobbles and I was doing reflections uh, the whole new wave European cinema had influenced me for my first network television debut and new wave European does not go along with NBC uh, it just didn't uh, in those days it, there was no common meeting ground so uh, I'm not really proud of the show, but it was a great experience to be baptized that way. What was your first professional movie assignment? I did a short film in college called Amblin, and I remember the, at the time the head of Universal Television saw the film, don't know how he saw it, 
Sid Scheinberg saw it. And he was impressed enough. It was a 35 millimeter. It was kind of slick. And uh, he looked at it and said, how would you like to do some television professionally? And I said, I haven't finished college yet. He said, well, listen, you can either walk out of here and uh, finish school, or you can quit school as a junior and you can come to work for Universal. And I, uh, I, I'm no fool. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, more Steven Spielberg, the man who made Poltergeist and E.T., what he believes about life elsewhere in the universe.